as many of the uh, tragic events uh, in Japan in the news, we've, uh, we've seen and heard um, this new term, uh, millisievert, um, sort of uh, used as a, as a unit of radiation. Uh, so what is it? So we've got our, our millisievert uh, unit, and of course, well, not surprisingly, a, a millisievert is one thousandth of one, uh, one sievert, of course. But, but what is the sievert? The sievert is, um, the, if you like, the, um, the human response. That's the important thing. It's the human response to, uh, to radiation. It contains all the information it needs about the type of radiation and the type of tissue. In other words, where the radiation ends up. The, the physics of the, of the measurement, in a sense, comes from our unit of gray, uh, our unit of, uh, of dose. And the unit of dose is measured in one joule per kilogram. In other words, the energy that's deposited in literally one uh, kilogram of tissue, which is probably around about that size. To humanize the, uh, the response, we clearly need to know about the effect of the radiation. So the first thing to do is to multiply the dose in gray by a radiation factor. And if for alpha particles, particularly destructive, we, uh, we allocate a factor of about 20 for gamma, uh, only a, a multiplier of 1. Because we know that an alpha source is more damaging than, uh, than, a, than a gamma source. Actually, most of the gamma goes through you without being absorbed. So it's, whereas the alpha particles are going to get stopped very easily by your, by your tissue, thus liberating their uh, energy. We want our measurement, the sievert, to reflect how dangerous these, uh, these particles are are in some relative way. So a, an alpha particle is 20 times more dangerous than a gamma photon. Clearly we want to know where, uh, what sort of particle it was, um, but we also need to know where it lands up. Now, a radiation deposited in certain types of tissue, um, like uh, gonads, the breast, the thyroid and so on, are more likely to have uh, a negative response, uh, in other words, a, a development of cancer, than, than bone or something like that. So we have to allocate different, and apportion different weightings to different, uh, different tissues uh, to, to reflect their likelihood of responding to radiation. So we then multiply our equivalent dose by another um, parameter, which gives us the effective equivalent dose. And here we are. We've actually arrived at our, our sievert, our measurement. Notice it's still got the same fundamental unit, joules per, per kilogram. What does one sievert actually, uh, actually do to us? Well, the one sievert, given over a lifetime, in other words, we add up uh, our annual dose over many years, or our little individual doses, one sievert would give us around about a 5% chance of, uh, of suffering from uh, a fatal cancer. So in other words, now we've, we have humanized the, uh, the unit into a probability, and I say I stress that it is only a probability, of getting, uh, of getting a fatal cancer. Okay, so let's try and put this in some sort of, uh, some sort of context, what, you know, what sort of quantity is actually a, a sievert. And the, the easiest way to do that is to just to think about our natural um, radiation dose. In other words, the dose that comes from um, gamma rays coming out of the, the rocks, very small, cosmic rays coming out, of, uh, coming out of the sky, again, very small. Actually, the carbon and the potassium inside us also gives us our own uh, gamma uh, uh, radiation. And so if we add all these things together, and assuming a sort of average UK type of figure, we end up with about two and a half uh, millisieverts as the annual average dose for somebody in the UK. Now, of course, you can see that you're unlikely to live long enough to actually receive a sievert of radiation, unless, of course, you have a, a medical x-ray or a lot of dental x-rays. Uh, you would not be able to get to uh, a sievert. So really, the units of sievert are only really relevant for nuclear industry. Uh, clearly, the, um, a nuclear reactor that's gone wrong um, will generate a lot of uh, radioactive material, certainly if it gets out into the uh, environment. The cesium, for instance, a gamma emitter, um, iodine and so on, a beta emitter. And uh, these can be taken up in, in the body, they can be breathed in and so on. And that will produce, over a lifetime, quite a high dose, uh, or could produce quite a high dose. 
So it's right that people are removed from the, uh, from the locality unless they're wearing protective, um, uh, protective equipment and taking appropriate, uh, appropriate precautions and so on. Sievert is really designed um, in terms of its units and its probabilities as to, to try and work out what lifetime doses are due or long-term doses. Clearly with a, a very sudden and short dose, um, then anything can happen. And in point of fact, if you get to the sort of level of five to ten sieverts uh, in total, then or five to ten grey, that is the sort of uh, radiation dose that would make you seriously ill and uh, very unlikely to survive. It's still a scientific unit, but in the end we've got a certain uns uh, uncertainty in the fact that somebody having a certain level of radiation, one person is going to uh, get, develop cancer, one person isn't. It's really the probability that that particle or that gamma photon actually did some damage to our DNA. Most of them go straight past without having any effect whatsoever, but some of them uh, will obviously cause damage. And then of course there's a probability that that damage will actually go on to develop cancer, and that's actually a very, very low number. Well, I thought I'd just go and show you a brief demonstration of, of, um, of, a, of how to measure, how we measure uh, gamma radiation. Uh, you may have seen the, the, the Geiger-Muller tubes and the little um, counters that they were using to measure sieverts and so on, or the equivalent in, uh, in gamma. So uh, I'd like to just show you that. Well, clearly, with radiation sources being very dangerous, we have to keep them under lock and key. I'm just going to open the cupboard, and inside this box, you can see right at the centre of that, uh, that box is a tiny dot and that's uh, cesium-137 and that's producing radiation all the time. Now it's in this box such that it's safe for me to handle. What we've got here is a, is a gamma um, detector. It's going to detect the gamma radiation from the, uh, from the cesium. Um, it's a special crystal inside the, uh, inside the can there. And this is a very similar device to the thing that uh, people have been using to monitor, uh, monitor radiation. You might have seen uh, people doing this. And this is, this is the sort of instrument that they would have been using. Okay, so what you're now seeing is um, the gamma particles being received and being counted. Well, each one of those uh, gamma photons is carrying um, a, certain amount of, uh, a certain amount of energy. And, of course, we can add up that energy uh, assuming that it all ends up in one kilogram of, uh, of tissue, then we can calculate the dose and therefore the uh, uh, effective uh, dose in sieverts. So we, effectively we've, we've now counted the, um, the number of gamma particles that are arriving at our detector. Now of course what we don't know is where all the other particles were going in that uh, cesium sample because of course they're going in all directions. So again, we've got, we've got to know something about the geometry of where the, where the cesium particle is. And so if it was on the skin, for instance, then clearly that's going to, most of that, half of it is going to go into the skin. Uh, if it's um, in the air somewhere, then clearly the, the gamma rays are going to go in all directions. I'm only going to get a small part of that. Well, what we've got here is um, yet another method of uh, measuring uh, radiation, somewhat simpler than the, um, than the radiation method we've just seen, the gamma counter. But this is sensitive to alpha, beta and gamma. So if I then pick up an americium source, which is contained in this, uh, in this little uh, container, which is in this little container, then I place it near my Geiger counter, then you see how close I have to get before this actually registers any sort of count. And really that shows us that the, the alpha particles coming out of here don't, come, don't travel very far in air. See, no effect there really, lots of effect there. The sort of radiation sources we're, we're allowed to use in uh, teaching laboratories uh, by their very nature are going to be very low uh, levels of, uh, of radiation. Um, they're enough to us to measure, but uh, hopefully not enough for us to do any serious, uh, serious damage with. So this is, this is off the scale in terms of you know, micro sieverts. And it would have to stay there on my skin, for instance, for, for quite some time before I got anywhere near uh, a, a dangerous level. But um, we do take very great care with these samples um, because uh, they could potentially do somebody uh, some damage.